Iran-backed groups form a land bridge across the Middle East and connect in an alliance that Tehran calls the Axis of Resistance. Its focus? To oppose the West. They can both transport equipment and personnel, but can also use these positions to attack US interests or threaten Israel closer to its borders. The alliance has been brought into focus amid the Hamas-Israel war, as the groups are mobilizing on multiple fronts Whoa! at the same time. So here's how Iran built out the network across the Middle East, and what it means for the US and Israel. So to show you where Iran's so-called axis of resistance works in the Middle East, we have Iran over here, and then, of course, Hamas in Gaza over here on the, on the Mediterranean. There's another group that Iran supports in uh, Gaza called the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, which is actually a closer ally of Iran ideologically, but also working out of Gaza here and also in the West Bank. Iran's most important uh, militia ally is Hezbollah here in Lebanon. Aside from that, they also have Syria's President Bashar al-Assad here and various militant groups in Iraq. And then finally, they also have an alliance with the Houthis in Yemen down here, down here south. These connections allow Iran to expand its influence in the Middle East and make it easier for the country to transport military equipment, personnel and weapons through the region. One of Iran's aims in the Middle East is to always keep the fight, or the military fight, as far away from its own borders as possible. And the presence of these military allies in the land bridge kind of helps it do that. To understand why Iran has this belt of influence in the region, we need to go back a few decades. Following the Iranian Revolution in 1979, Tehran has sought to exert military, cultural and ideological dominance across the Middle East. That led to the creation of the Quds Force, a branch of the Iranian military, which was later led by Qasim Soleimani. Soleimani became famous in the West over the past decade or so because Iran decided to elevate his profile as the mastermind, the architect behind this modern iteration of, of the Axis of Resistance. Later, Soleimani was killed in a drone strike ordered by the US. Soleimani was plotting imminent and sinister attacks on American diplomats and military personnel, but we caught him in the act and terminated him. The strike was aimed at weakening Iran's ability to threaten American interests in Iraq and across the region. But that goal hasn't materialized. Iran has continued to supply groups such as Hamas with weapons and training. On October 7th, Hamas, designated a terror organization by the US, launched a broad assault on Israel, killing 1,200. Iranian Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei said immediately after the attack that Iran did not have a hand in planning it, but supported it. To try and curb Iran's influence, the US works with allied countries to have a presence of bases and troops across the Middle East. Of course, Israel here and Saudi Arabia here as the two sort of main and closest allies against Iranian influence. Jordan has also for very long been a, been a very firm US ally and it, the US also has partners in the Gulf. The US also has a presence in some of the countries where it's, where it's competing for influence with Iran, for example, in Iraq, of course. Um, and the US also still has a military presence in northern Syria, where it's been allied for many years with Kurdish forces in the fight against the Islamic State, but now also maintains a military presence to sort of counter this Iranian land bridge or the threat from Iran to, to US interests and allies. Tehran-backed groups operating in this region have been particularly active since October 7th. So let's remove all of these and take a look at what's been happening. On October 7th, Hamas attacked Israel here on the border with Gaza. Israel responded with a major military offensive on Gaza. But Iran's allies have also responded to this Israeli uh, attack from different sides. Most importantly, the Hezbollah militia in the northern part with Israel has engaged in skirmishes with Israeli soldiers. Iranian militias in Syria have also gotten closer to the border where they have uh, engaged in skirmishes. Down here in Yemen, the Iranian allied Houthi rebels have uh, both fired rockets 
at southern Israel, but also captured a vessel in the Red Sea. The Houthis also launched drones and missiles at other commercial vessels in the area. That led to a US-led multinational task force stepping in to try and protect one of the world's most vital shipping lanes. And elsewhere, Iranian-backed militias in Iraq and Syria conducted nearly 100 rocket attacks against US forces over the past two months, according to the Pentagon. Even though there's been these types of attacks with increased frequency over the past decade or so, in this context, of course, of course they compound pressure on Israel uh, and help sort of pressure Israel in this context where they are, where they're fighting Hamas and Gaza. Although Iran's axis of resistance has claimed attacks on multiple fronts amid the Hamas-Israel war, Middle East analysts believe a wider regional conflict is unlikely for now. Even though other parts of this alliance have distanced themselves from the October 7th attacks, the fact that it was a big attack on Israel has given the alliance a bit of momentum, but also put a little bit of pressure, to be honest, on some of the other uh, militant groups to, to both to strike a bit of Israel and, and to come to the defense of the Palestinians who are now under severe airstrikes and a ground invasion in Gaza. So far, groups in the alliance have been sticking to calculated and strategic strikes, rather than moves that could risk a full-blown conflict with Israel and its allies.